Welcome to the Monster Show. Welcome to the Monster Show. Let's stay together. <laughs> it's, it's the Monster Show. It's the Monster Show. It's lovely. It's lovely. It's the Monster Show. Welcome to Mom Spring. It's the Mom Spring Show. Where anything is possible. Candy. Candy. <laughs> Welcome to today's episode of the Mom Spring Show. Is yours truly, Bissala? And today we're going to be talking about some interesting things. We've got in the studio here with us Felicia from Google and Ruth, who is the founder of Develo Naturals. But before we get into that, we have some gist on the mothership. So I'm going to hand over to Michelle, who is going to start the conversation. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Mom Spring Show. It is your host today. Michelle, did you miss me from the last episode? Yeah, I'm back. Anyways, um, like you heard, we have three people in the studio today, actually, not two. So we have Felicia, we have Bissola, who forgot to introduce herself, and we have and we have Ruth. On today's topic today, I saw something trending on Twitter. I saw something trending on Twitter today. Um, it was a thread, actually. Somebody was talking about um, communication. So he had a conversation with his kids. He was he was traveling some Abuja to somewhere, wherever that train that is in Nigeria goes to. I shall know that he moved from Abuja, Abuja sorry, <laughs> to wherever it moves to. And um, so he left home early. Uh, he didn't wake his kids because he didn't want to go through the whole process of telling him he was traveling, telling them he was traveling and things. And of course, they wake up. Daddy's not home, so his wife calls, um, and of course, his kids are upset. And then he has to apologize to his kids because, I mean, he just woke up and disappeared like almost in the dead of night. So in the process of him talking to his children, he meets somebody across from him. Actually, it was number one eavesdropping, which is quite rude, but okay, let's excuse that because he's older, quote and unquote. But um, he, after the conversation, he goes, "Oh, that was he was was he apologizing to his kids?" And he says yes. And then he's like, "Oh, you know, you shouldn't apologize to children because you're going to make them feel entitled and spoiled and yada yada yada." And he's and he's talking to himself. He's talking to the guy, obviously, and he's like, "No, but he has to apologize to his children because he did something wrong, and he was apologized to when he was younger, and he's not spoiled, so he's not really flowing with the logic." And then the man says, oh, that he wouldn't understand, you know, that these children of you young ones of nowadays, quote and unquote, again. And then he just couldn't understand it. And then he told the man, well, he's going to raise his children the way he knows how. Um, certain things were done to him and for him, and he didn't turn out badly because of those things. And of course, people would now come and hop on the bandwagon and comment. And some people were for him apologizing to his kids. Some people were not for him apologizing to his kids. And it just made me wonder, like, is there is there a problem with apologizing to children? I don't think there is. And I, I'm not from a home where it's a problem for you to apologize to children. I was sharing a story earlier in the studio of my little cousin who's four. And he was apologized to. And, well, actually, let me, let me go back <laughs> into the story. So he took it. I gave him a shower. And he was he was supposed to come out of the tub and he wasn't really having it. He wanted to play with water and things. And I'm like, oh no, you actually have to come out because your other brother has to have a, have a bath. And he's still playing around. So I forcefully take him out of the shower, wrap him in the towel and keep him in the room and then give his, other, his older brother a bath. And when I'm done with his older brother, he comes in and taps me on my lap. And I'm like, what's up? And then he's like, I hurt his feelings. And I'm like, I'm sorry, what happened? And he's like... I wasn't done having a bath and you took me out of the shower. I'm like, okay, I'm really sorry, but do you realize you hurt my feelings too? And then he's like, oh, I'm really sorry. I didn't realize. And I'm like, yeah, I was telling you to have a, to get out of the shower. You didn't want to. So that's actually you being a bit disobedient. And your older brother had to have a bath. So you just think it's a bit selfish. And his mood kind of changes because it's like, oh yeah, I thought I was right. But then apparently I'm also wrong. 
So he really apologizes and he asks if I forgave him. And I'm like, yes, I did. And I asked, do you forgive me? And then he's like, he has to take a minute to think about it. <laughs> and I'm like, um, okay, I'm going to give you a minute. My aunt is like, uh-uh, you're still thinking about it. And then he goes, um, so he comes back to me after a few minutes and he taps me and he's like, okay, I forgive you now because I was really hurt. And I'm like, okay, no problem. And then we went on our merry way. And I mean, ladies, what do you guys think about sure. young man? Honestly. How old did you say he was? He's four. Wow. Like he's so in tune with his feelings that and first of all he could mm-hmm. identify that he was hurt, mm-hmm. then identify that he wasn't ready to let it go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then when he was ready, he could communicate it because yeah, even a so lot yeah, of find, adults find, find have, find like, struggle to even be so in tune with their feelings mm-hmm. to be able to tell you, you know what, I'm not okay with you right now. I can't really break from you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because mm-hmm. it's tough. Yeah, it's actually I actually really applaud and also applaud the fact that you were able to identify the fact that he wasn't ready to let go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. he wanted to process his feelings appropriately Mm -hmm. and then now say okay yes I processed it yes I was wrong here yes actually because that could have gone another way she could have gone another way she could have been frustrated and what's your problem excuse me I'm your mother you could have excuse me forgive me (laughs) (laughs) no shade to my amazing mother but she does that thing she expects (laughs) that immediately she immediately there's a there's an issue and she scolds you you know, there's a period where you want to sulk. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. She's like, I can't understand why you're sulking. Can they talk to why you? Why are you your face? Yeah. yeah. I'm like, yeah. I mean, but actually, I, I need to like process that. I was like, okay, what yes, are you I was processing? wrong, but you are shouting. <laughs> why do you want to process? <laughs> yes. You know, and then it's it's a, it's a necessity. Even, I mean, my aunt is, my aunt is, you need to be able to, she has two boys. So she's like, you don't want to raise a man who cannot be able to talk to people about how he feels mm-hmm. he wants mm. to cry because he was hurt about something and you're like oh no men don't cry uh-uh. it's a little boy he's gonna shed tears he's gonna yeah. weep a because if bit. men yeah. don't cry that's how they grow up to not, not be able to share their emotions yes. right because yes. yeah that breeds like whole toxic masculinity thing right or mm-hmm. this sense of can't express self and then that leads to so many other complications so exactly right. and then to, violence there's, there's yeah. a ton of well, yeah, things that come yeah because repressed feelings have to come out exactly. somehow it comes mm-hmm. out mm-hmm. 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 so a lot of a lot of a lot of kids you see are very upset arrogant you know always throwing temper tantrums up and down the place and then if you want to take a back seat to see what the problem is everybody's always like oh no i don't really know what's wrong and things but you need to really check for certain mm-hmm. things there's a possibility but actually, that um some I, emotions are being... i actually read that t- um tweet you're talking about mm-hmm. i saw it on instagram and i also saw it on twitter mm-hmm. and it just goes to show the difference between old school and new school mm-hmm. yeah yeah because yes. what the guy the old guy said is actually what a lot of our parents say which mm-hmm. is to one ignore your feelings two to give you the whole um old eyes right right yes. quote unquote mm-hmm. and then tell you that you know whatever it is that i tell you at some point in time is correct mm-hmm. at the end of the day whether or not you believe it to right. be so because yeah. i know so, my mom obsessed me and i'm like no that's not okay but i'm your mom you should know me by now just be okay exactly <laughs> 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 Mine would always just turn that what if she, if she she was feeling some type of way and then I point out how it is that I felt when I was much younger. Mm-hmm. She would be like, Hey yes, excuse me, and so so like, <laughs> let's move on. Let's move on. You know, let's move on but from then if there. you don't but if you don't if you if you unpack that a bit further, you realise it's because they weren't allowed to exactly. talk about their feelings. So even when you're trying to tell them your feelings they can't handle it because they would actually like, tell you that we had much wrong. more things to worry about yeah. like yeah. survival my mother would tell you that wait excuse me is it when i was hiding under my bed during the civil war running from soldiers that i'll be wondering about what i'm feeling yes i yes. gave you much more than that so it's us really unpacking how it is that we feel from generation to generation mm-hmm. and ensuring that our children do not mm-hmm. carry that baggage carry that baggage even that baggage when even scary. when my mom is when when, when you say oh you see things online of oh an eight year old is depressed. My mom is like, what are you depressed about? What are you what Yes, they it? don't get that. But I'm always like, mm. no, but they, they, they think people don't process emotion. You don't know what the eight year old child has seen or gone through. And then calling it depression is just putting a label on what a lot of people have been feeling for so long. Yeah. But it's always like, oh yes, the oppression that comes with Nigerians. It's with being Nigerian. So, it's not that yeah. oppression, it's depression. That's depressed. <laughs> you see, this instance though, like with the the guy on the train, what kind of boggles my mind is that he actually felt to express that you should not now i understand like older generations being like what is this apologizing to child thing that you're doing mm. as it confused like why would you do that it's not necessary so you had to leave early what's the issue it. i mm-hmm. had to go that's it mm-hmm. so that i would understand just this sense of bewilderment about apologizing not that 
-hmm. you should not apologize. Exactly. Okay, okay, understand. And then okay, he so actually, you know what I mean? Points. If the it's not guy... second nature, fine. If it's not, it wouldn't come to your mind to do that. But it doesn't mean it's wrong. Right? Exactly. <laughs> the so guy now... actually told, um, the older guy actually told the younger guy, guy that if you when you apologize to children, you start to give them a sense of self-importance and they start to act spoiled. Yeah, wow. I'm actually quoting. I'm actually quoting what the guy said, and in my mind, I'm wow. like, okay, so is my daughter spoiled because she tells me how? She yeah, that's what I'm, 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 I'm no, she's, she's actually she's actually she the, she's actually she the most. She's actually a true leader, and she knows how yes. to express herself. Yes, and she knows and how to differentiate, differentiate when something between is wrong. what is wrong and what, what is, is right. right. Yeah. Yeah. She's not frustrated. She's I call my daughter able... the negotiator because you tell her no, you can't do this because she's like, so you're telling me if I fix that thing, I can now do this. <laughs> <laughs> oh but then the thing is, you are in the making. <laughs> okay, so how do we now draw a line between allowing them communicate effectively and then discipline? Because mm. you can allow something, yeah, the child can apologize and yeah, 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 and the next thing before you know it, the child now begins to cross the border of you know being rude and things like that. So that's how do you draw? That's you test. I'll give an example. Um, my son is a typical boy wearing, you know, at the age of one, he was given a robot car. Mm -hmm. And in one week, he had dismantled that car just to know what it is what that is. made it run. Ooh, mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So he's the kind of child who likes to test boundaries. Now, the difference between giving your child a voice and discipline is that they know the difference between anger and love. When okay. you discipline a child with emotion, mm -hmm. that's anger. Yeah. That is punishment. That mm -hmm. is not. That child is not understanding. But when you discipline a child and you explain to that child before discipline, I love you, but what it is that you did was wrong. Mm -hmm. yes. I am not punishing you uh, because I hate you. I'm punishing you because there are consequences to, to action. Yeah. So that's, that um, discipline can come in either a spank or taking away something or removing something that they love for a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. But they then learn that whatever it is that you put out, whether good or bad, yeah. you will get back get to get yourself. Equal passions. Equal passions. Mm. You know, um, I says third theory, really. Okay. For every action, action there's, there's an like equal and opposite science, reaction. Science, children. Yeah. Come on. So, <laughs> what, what, so, I mean, as a parent, what, come, what mistake have you made when it came to disciplining your children? Disciplining your children. Or communicating, I'm going to use the word discipline, but communicating with them. What errors hmm. have you so, I think, acknowledged that you I made? I think mine is probably com communication and discipline. Because I know, at first, I think I was very, because my mom was the extreme of super strict, every little thing. I mean, so my mom was so extreme that... um one time a boy wrote me a letter because he liked me and I wrote a yeah. response to say I'm not interested leave me alone I got mm -hmm. a proper spanking all night long like because, what did you oh, do wow. that the boy was looking at you <laughs> oh <laughs> my god that kind of, just a bit extra yeah. <laughs> so I was kind of at first I was just like oh I don't you know I'm just touchy feely I don't want to but then mm -hmm. I realized that my kids didn't respect me like they would just mm. be like oh well whatever she, even if I threatened I wouldn't follow through mm -hmm. so what I've now realized is okay I have to communicate that there's boundaries and mm -hmm. these are the boundaries if, if you go, go if you cross them this will this will this be the, the this consequence. Okay. And I will follow through on that consequence. I think okay. my younger child is the most shocked one because she's mama's pet. So when okay. I give her a spanking, she kind of gives me the eyes like, "Wow, <laughs> you yeah. actually did it! <laughs> I did it!" <laughs> so yeah. Okay. So another thing I'm curious about. So my little, well, his older brother, um, he used mm. during the holiday. He used the word wistful. So I mean, he's not. Excuse me. Not, I'm, I'm not even joking. He's, he's how six. old? He's six. Mm -hmm. So we're not four children. They, were, they were children. They were home for the holidays, and they were home for the holidays, and um, we like call them video calls, and he sees everybody, and we're like, "Oh, Merry Christmas! We miss you! Happy New Year!" And then he has a frown. He's like, "I feel very wistful. I miss everybody." And then my mom is like. Okay, so during conversation, my aunt now says, "You know, I'm really pained. I miss this thing." And my mom goes, "So are you feeling wistful now?" <laughs> <laughs> the, the word for the day was wistful. wistful. We're feeling very wistful. But how do we how do we build children's vocabulary? You know, to be able to use quote unquote big big words because I have a friend who uses it, which is like, "You have come with your English." <laughs> but how do you actually build their vocabulary to use more? You know, intense words. Exposure. I think talking really? like you talk to your friends, like exposure. adults. Yeah, exposure, exposure, exposure is exposure. important. And then, what it is that you do, they copy. So, if you're all about the social media lang uh, lingua, if you're all about the um, oh my god, 
Oh my God! Your children will yeah. say, "Your children will follow <laughs> through." Very cautious of that. You have to be very cautious, especially most likely when they're young. And then encourage the use of a dictionary when they're reading. Okay. Don't explain to them what word this word means or that word means. No, go and check it. Mm-hmm. Like the, that. Thing, yeah. the thing, the thing, the thing I'm very honest about with my children is, mommy, do you, mommy, I have this ex. And my son, my God, Father Lord, <laughs> you have blessed me with a child, but I can't answer all these. Questions. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so many questions. So many questions. My son comes and he's like, oh, mommy, what is the? Have you ever wondered why you know the sky is blue and not green? And why the sun radiates, blah blah blah. I'm like, go and Google Ooh. it. Like My a little genius. Genius. Google it. I love it. Hey. <laughs> okay, I'm aliens. like, Google, Google it. Is your Google, let's learn. You know, let's, let's, learn, let's, together. Together. let's all learn together. So I'm like, get your dictionary. If he comes and he has a problem, I'm like, have you tried it out first? Mm-hmm. Have you tested it out first? Do you know you know the process? And he's like, no. No, I came straight to you. I'm like, no, don't come straight to me. Go ahead, <laughs> but you're also encouraging him dictionary. to think critically and problem yes. solve on his own. So that way he's not always looking for somebody else to give him the answer. Mm-hmm. And it's perfect because he doesn't know if you know or not. So you can be like, hmm, mm. I want you to I find out. out. <laughs> you know, I'm very you tell un- me. See, I'm, I'm, very very honest. Honest. <laughs> I'm very honest with my children. I don't know. Let's <laughs> I say us that too, Google to be it. My, my, because my then they tend brother. to, because if you are the kind of parent who, sorry, if you're the kind of parent who, you know, you're always giving your children the answer or you are like, you want to seem like quote unquote, no, it all. Okay. no it all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, when they come to you and you actually don't know something, don't right. build up yourself to be that mm. tower yeah, and then you then yeah. have yeah. play true. feet. No, I'm, I'm a mom. Please, I'm a human being like you. Let's learn together. Mommy has limited knowledge. Let's knowledge it together. <laughs> so, <laughs> mommies and daddies out there, if you're listening to this show, learn to talk to your children one and sure you communicate with them make them use the dictionary they don't like it because they have to literally look for words in a book that has so many different words make them use their dictionaries what let them and watch read. tv actually read also let them read let them, read. Let them watch you read yeah. true Model because they will Model follow what behavior. you are doing let and them then watch you, read. you know these random um voices that we use like no, i don't know those kind of things like if you don't want them to be sounding like that you know take it back a bit Oh, just I, I also need to let Did you just do it? For example, I apologize. I apologize, but yeah. So these are the different ways. If you have more ways, please let us know in the comment section. Let's have a conversation about it because I feel like it's really important for us to communicate with kids. We'll see you in the next episode of the Mothership. Welcome to the Monthly Show. Welcome to the Monthly Show. Let's say together. <laughs> It's, it's the mushroom show. It's the mushroom show. It's lovely. It's lovely. It's the mushroom show. All right then, welcome to today's health segment of the Mom Spring Show. This month of January is a thyroid awareness month, and most people don't even know what a thyroid is or where it is. So, um, we're going to talk about why it's important to check it out. It's basically a gland in your neck. And if you have a disorder of, of the thyroid, you can have weird symptoms like dry skin, constipation, depression, nervousness, fatigue, intolerance to heat or cold. Oh, wow, that sounds weird. So to help us with this, we're going to have a survivor, um, Iroma Ofotube. She's an award winning community development expert, also known as the Thyroid Queen, a certified social sector manager from Pan Atlantic University. She's a patient advocate, health coach, healthy living advocate, and social entrepreneur. She survived thyroid disease, and she's going to share with us her story and how to prevent it. So, Iroma. Yeah. Thank you for joining us today. And um, I, wanted to, I just wanted to introduce you to, the, to our listeners and just get an understanding of your personal journey. You survived this. How? Please tell us about that. Okay. Let me first of all tell us about the, what this thyroid gland is all about. You know, everyone has thyroid gland. It's a butterfly shape that is located at the base of the neck. And there is the master gland that is responsible for the body metabolism. You know what? That is, in a, in a layman's language, it means that the whole body system, the cells and the tissues, um, the organs of the body, they are all connected to the, um, the thyroid gland to uh, function optimally. Of which, if there's any problem on the thyroid gland, it affects the whole of the body from the brain down to the feet, even from the hair. So, um, 
I happened to have this disease for, uh, for four years, of which I became. And one thing about thyroid disease is that the symptoms mimic other health conditions, which makes it somehow sometimes difficult for the doctors to really dig the underlying cause of a particular symptom. Because of its, uh, uh, the, the, the you know, similarity with other health conditions. So, um, thyroid gland is a gland which produces two hormones that are responsible for the body metabolism. The, that is uh, T4, we call it tyrosine, and T3, which is called thy, thyroid, thyroid or thyroid mind. All these hormones, they regulate the body function, you know. Then, this disease may be caused maybe due to iodine deficiency or maybe autoimmune where the thyroid and the immune system attacks the thyroid gland and it may cause the thyroid hormone to overproduce uh, hormone which we refer to as um, hyperthyroidism or to underproduce. So if something like that happens, the person happens to have experiencing so many symptoms, which could be mental or physiological, you know, and some also unexplainable symptoms that the person may not even know that the underlying causes are, 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 are is really a, a thyroid issue. In my own case, I had hyperthyroidism and it started with the mental illness. I, I started, I started uh, having panic attacks, I started you know, losing weight, also repeated weight loss. And naturally, I have been uh, that size 16 person. All of a sudden, I saw myself coming down to size 12 without even, you know, effort like With all that anxiety, um, irritability. And before I knew it, my eyes started shooting out, bulging out. I had been using uh, glasses. My mind went to the fact that maybe I've been having eye issues. Maybe uh, the problem was coming from the uh, as a result of the eye problem. I never knew. It was that my eye is that bulging eye that made me to seek for more atten medical attention to really rule out any other thing that was causing me. So that was when I got to know that uh, I, I got, I was referred to somewhere for diagnosis and I was diagnosed of thyroid disease. And permit me to stay here, uh, thyroid gland is an endocrine gland. And is, uh, the disease is, uh, is mostly, is a gender specific disease that affects women five to eight times than men. Hmm. Yes. So, so how did so what kind of test did you have to run to find out that it was a thyroid disorder? Was it a special kind of doctor you had to go to? Yes, yes, yes. If you experience like um, all this, let me also put um, let me also there's a significant point I want to make, very salient point. Thyroid disease has many types. It could be hyperthyroidism, and it has its own associated symptoms. That is very, 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 very unique to hyperthyroidism. Then there is hypothyroidism, which has its own symptoms. And other types too, there is just goiter that will attack someone, that will start swelling up. All of them are, you know, thyroid issues. Then another thing is the treatment of all these uh, thyroid diseases, they have their own specific. Symptoms. I mean, specific treatment options, you know, according to the patient, what the patient is manifesting. Right. So, so if someone yeah. wants to get, do a, either an assessment or a test just to make sure, you know, whether they have, you know, a thyroid disorder or not, just in case they mm -hmm. have some of the symptoms you've mentioned, what kind of specialist should they be looking for? Thyroid function test. Okay. And yes. is, that take, yes. is that available in every hospital? Not really. Or is like it only in my organization, that? like in my organization, 
what I did when I started, when I established this organization, was to all those things, all those areas I had terrible experiences, I tried as, as much as possible to make it easier for people. Like, I had a problem with assessing where to do my diagnosis. So what I did was to strike a deal with a very good uh, digital, one of the foremost and one of the best uh, diagnostic centers in Lagos that has ranked in some states to make sure that our people get quality and affordable healthcare or diagnosis from them. So we as an organization, we have a diagnostic center that we, we partner with. And why do we partner with them? Because of accuracy, because from experience, we've had some issues of discrepancy. So it's not every lab how, that does thyroid function tests that how, diagnoses very well. Oh, I see. How often yes. should one be tested? Well, you can do your test once in six months. Once in six months, you can go for a thyroid function test and check your thyroid status if that's bad. Oh, wow. I don't think Especially I've ever for women. That. Most times people think that it's when there's a swelling on the neck, that is when thyroid is manifest. But there are different symptoms. You can be gaining weight, you can be adding weight, you can have constipation, you can have you can visit the toilet often, you can, you know, cold intolerance and heat intolerance. Hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism, they work in opposite directions. So there are we always educate when they experience certain symptoms or you don't even need to experience it or when you experience it and you go to the hospital you're having palpitations you're having uh, your heart is racing faster and your doctor is giving you BP drugs like during my own time I was having um, I have blood a quick pressure. question Hello? Did, did you say only women can have thyroid disorders? It's not only women did like you if you thyroid... have like 10 thyroid patients Okay. You may have only one man. Oh, them. so nine out of ten will be women, and yeah. then ten yeah. percent will be men. Okay, I see. I understand yeah. now. So, and you said yeah. people should try and get tested twice a year, and um, and then is there any ways? Is there any ways? Is it is treatable, right? Of course, it's treatable, okay. and it's better when it's diagnosed early enough. So the earlier you and you know what you know the you know most of the time our doctors that come on air. They don't tell us that thyroid disease is also a threat to a female, even male reproductive organ. Because wow. women that have this thyroid disease, it happened to me. I have three kids. and trying to uh, add another one because I wanted to have four kids. I couldn't conceive. Right. I, 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 mean, I can understand that because from what we've researched, we found that one of the nutrients or the deficiencies that also contribute to having a thyroid issue is iodine, yes, iodine which is iodine important deficiency. for pregnancy and newborn development. Um, thank you so, so much for joining us. This has been such an educational segment. We've learned a lot. Um, this is January is Thyroid Awareness Month, so let's all be aware. Yeah. Let's get tested. Yeah. Let's make sure that we're taking charge of our health and having a healthy thyroid function. So thank you so much for joining us um, on today's health segment. And now we're going to move on to the 905 Shira of the day. Welcome to today's episode of the 9 to 5 Shira segment, the segment where we celebrate a mom who's doing amazing things working nine to five we're working full time because sometimes it's not really nine to five but yeah so today we've got felicia otolori she's the doting mom of a one-year-old star girl she's been married for two and a half years and has over 12 years of professional experience spanning two continents Hmm. currently she's the business development manager at google west africa where she supports business growth and economic impact by helping corporations leverage the power of digital marketing. Felicia has an MBA from the IE Business School in Spain and an undergrad degree in English and Media Studies from Sussex University, UK. Her previous experience spans Universal Music UK, the Tony Illumilu Foundation, and Microsoft Nigeria. Wow. 
<laughs> Welcome, Michelle. We're in good company today. <laughs> Hi, good afternoon. Welcome, Felicia. <laughs> Thank you. Glad to be here. So, Felicia, how are you this like, you know, um, I don't even know the word. It's skipping my brain, but you know, this go-getter from just reading your bio, I'm like, wow, wow, wow. And you're doing this and you've got a, you've got a daughter, you've got a husband. How are you balancing everything? Um, with great difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's okay to admit with, that it's not easy. Through prayer and fasting. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, um, no, it is a juggling act, of course. And I think as with anyone in any industry, I think sometimes there are days where I feel like, yeah, I've got this. This is, this is smooth. I'm on top this, of is, this. this is working. And other days where it's just like, Lord, something has to give. I wish I could be a stay-at-home mom. Do, do you ever have those moments yes. where you're like... I have those moments where I'm like, so why am I doing all these things? <laughs> right. Like, who sent me? Yeah. And but I guess the question is, how do you move forward from those moments? How do you keep going? I just think it's about having a vision mm. for yourself. Having a vision of who you want to be, what impact you want to make on this world. Um, and then a vision for your family as well. What kind of good behaviors or... Um, you know, what character do I want my children? I mean, I have one child, but I'm speaking into the future. Right, <laughs> so right. Be, Speak it out. You know, right? Um, what do I want my children to see, right? And what behaviors and lessons can they learn from me and how I live my life? So all of these things and just kind of having the end goal mm -hmm. in mind is what kind of helps keep me going. Because then it's like, okay, wow, we're working towards something here. So Felicia, is, you are one person that every time I see you, you just seem so serene and calm. Like, even with a one-year-old. And I was looking at her, like, just watching you and your one-year-old, I was kind of freaking out, like, oh, my God, where's her nanny? And you're just, like, so calm. Like, yeah, she's doing this, and I'm doing that. And I was like, how do you just, how do you just keep looking so calm? I, I, I wish I could just be that calm, like, in real life. I'm like, a, is it ducks or swans that, like, yes. above the surface, they look cool, they're, they're like chilling, like, yes. and then underneath it's, like, the paddling and the... Yeah, so that... I've always been like that, though. I get that a lot, like... I've had times in my career where there's been a lot of like hectic happening mm -hmm. and people are like, you've got it so together. I'm like, aha, I really don't. It seems that way, but internally there's a lot happening here. Wow. Um, but I've just kind of learned to just kind of pace myself, I guess, mm -hmm. and not put myself under too much pressure. Um, I'm a big believer in balance. And I'm a big believer in the African proverb that says, you can't come and kill yourself. And so with that, I'm like, okay, you know, even times where my, my one-year-old is running around and like, to your point, what you're referring to is the period where my nanny was off and, um, you know, by myself with her pretty much. Well, her dad was around as well. But yeah, in those moments where there's a lot happening, it's like, last, last, she'll be okay. You know, no, like, <laughs> so Felicia, I have to give you props for this one because me in that situation, I'll just sit down at home. I'm not showering today. <laughs> it's okay. Let's just be here. But Felicia is out there doing things, still meeting up with people. And I'm like, wow, Felicia, you're, you're a star. I am. Um, so I'm learning. So what you've said here is pace yourself yeah. and find balance. And it looks like you prioritize what's important and then leave the rest. That's what that can't come and kill yourself. Exactly. You. Exactly. And I like well to done. also get my hands stuck in with multiple things. Mm -hmm. um, and so then it means that you're never too dependent on other people doing something for you. That makes right? sense. And so I think that also helps to like have a good grasp of lots of different areas. Whether so, that's, so no matter what happens, at least, I mean, yeah, you can't carry last. You can't exactly. And it's like that even with work, even though we all have our different roles and teams and so on, I like to learn a little bit of everything because it's like if so-and-so is on leave i don't want to say that oh i can't get my deadline do you understand so -so. Right. right so it's like let's let's just we've got to find a way always also sounds like ain't nobody gonna get in your way so if somebody is not it's not <laughs> is not doing what they need to do you're gonna just make it happen so that's how these all these uh achievements at work is, uh, have been happening so how have you kept it up being a mom continuing to be a high performer at work have you have you kept that going um, I'm grateful for just working at a good organization, honestly. And I think for any working parent, um, you have to be even more cognizant of who you're working for. Like, really review that. Uh, because I actually made a career switch, well, a, a role switch while pregnant. Wow. Yeah. 
Usually when you're pregnant is when you don't ruffle any feathers. I know. You're like, let them not notice me. <laughs> so I can just go and come back from a time. I know, I know. <laughs> but it was one of those ones where I was like, I was, I was a, at a different technology company in Nigeria and there was some changes in the org and I could have had a new role which was entirely different to my career trajectory that I wanted for myself. Or I could apply for Google and try that out. And I went for applying for Google. And when I got it, there was a moment of, do I stick to what's familiar? Because, you know, I'm coming into my second trimester. Who starts a new job pregnant? You don't really want to be like the new pregnant life. woman. But yeah. well, this is a lot about Google, too, because they hired you. Yes, they did. And I still yeah. got my full maternity leave, too. Look at that. Like, So it wasn't even like a based on tenure. It was like, Within four months of joining, I went on maternity leave. How is that for forward thinking companies? As in, I look at you adding value now. They would have missed amen. out. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so, right, I think it really helps. Like the company you work for, um, their policies, how progressive they are, the level of flexibility, what your manager is like as well, and whether they understand some of the nuances to being a parent and balancing. All of that helped. They were all factors in my decision for what organization to work for because so I'm hearing that if you're going to go- succeed working for someone else as a mom you have to make sure that they have policies that support you Absolutely. and that they stand by those policies they do, they're, they're not just on paper exactly. right exactly because flexibility I'm hearing that flexibility and it sounds yeah. like you you have the opportunity to plan your time and the opportunities that come to you so that's yeah. good that's yeah. very autonomy, good autonomy all of these things are really important very important so Moms listening out there, if you're trying to figure out how to balance it all, maybe you're pregnant for the first time and you're like, how is this going to affect my career? Just look at the policies your company has. Can they work for me? Is there something I can negotiate to make this work for me? Or do I need to be looking at something else? I didn't say leave your job. (laughs) Think about what works for your family because your family is priority. If you have balance at home, it's easy to give your best at work. Absolutely. So is there anything you'd like to leave us with today, Felicia, as we listen to you? As we've heard from you today, any thing, any words of inspiration to a mom out there who's just like, ah, I want to work in tech, but you know, I have two kids. Is it really possible? Um, I would just say, um, ladies, please don't limit yourselves. I've had over the years many kind of limiting beliefs that I've had to do away with, and just tell myself that it's Wait, all sorry, possible. Sorry, it's it's all Give me one example of a limiting belief you had. No, okay, so even like. With. So, okay, so when I got pregnant, uh, no, fast forward, when the baby came, who's now one years old, um, I was very big on, you know, breastfeeding, really wanted to breastfeed for as long as possible. But then I knew that after my roughly five months of maternity leave, I'm going back to work. How's that really going to fare with this whole exclusive breastfeeding thing? And so I remember there were times and I was in the UK and I was talking to a midwife, I think. And I was like, yeah, um, I'm not going to be able to breastfeed for longer than like five months. And she was like, oh, why? I was like, oh, I'm going back to work. And she was like, oh, really? Is there no way you can? I was like, nope, because I can't express enough. Like I was just limiting, limiting, limiting. It's not going to be possible. I work full time. Da, 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 da. And then I thought, you know, what is important to me? Is it more important that um, I breastfeed because I want to breastfeed and it's my decision? Or is the limiting belief going to take over and tell me that it's not feasible, it's not doable? And so I just made it work for myself in that it was, I mean, it wasn't the easiest thing, right? I was expressing milk several times a day. So I'd block in my calendar, like during work, like do not schedule. Because <laughs> you can't really write express milk type. So I'd put like do not schedule or busy, like twice a day, every single day in my wow, cow. Wow, that's commitment. Yeah, so that I could express because I really didn't want to give her formula at that age. I didn't want to give her formula till a certain age. And it, it was my goal and... Ultimately, I was able to, to do it. So how long was she able to stay on breast milk for? Um, till 14 months. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. I mean, she started eating at six months. I know, months, of course. Like, yeah, so it was she, some she solid was there as well. Wow. Well but yeah, done. she didn't... Yeah. And that that was just like a personal preference, right? Like everyone's different. If you're a mom who decides that, you know what, the breastfeeding thing isn't for me or at three months, I'm going to, you know, start combo feeding with formula, whatever works for you. But for me, it was just a goal. And once I did away with this whole thinking that it wasn't feasible for me because I'm a working mom, I just made it happen. And the thing is, we didn't really have all of the infrastructure in my office for it. Like 
our mother's room is technically not really a mother's room it's also a meeting room so <laughs> right so I had to like speak to facilities like what can we get a curtain in there can we get some like can just had to actually get, make this a mother's room uh, you know get some infrastructure going to make it comfortable not just for myself but for those that come after me you know you have right. to think like there are others yeah so yeah. you truly are a nine to five hero so you've made first of all breastfeeding for 14 months while working and then paving the way for other moms so they can have a comfortable space to pump in your office well done Aisha. thank you we look forward to seeing amazing things with coming from you we know you have a project coming up soon yeah. um teaching us how to take care of our kids hair i do so we look forward to seeing more on that Pearl Bell, thank you yes thank you for coming appreciate it and now we're gonna move on to the next segment it's the Monk Show. It's the Monk Show. It's lovely. It's lovely. It's the Monk Show. Candy. 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 Welcome to today's episode of Fem Founder, where we feature a mom who's also an entrepreneur who started a business and is creating jobs and opportunities for others. Today, we've got Ruth Matthew. She's the founder and lead formulator of Davella Naturals. She, she's a stay-at-home mom, mom, too, and an entrepreneur. Okay, I want to hear about that. And she started her business journey as executive secretary of Palm 3 Concepts, with which she still runs on the side and now runs Davella Naturals. Hey, this is a multipreneur in the building. Um, Develo Naturals is a natural hair consultancy and manufacturer of hair products. So, welcome, Ruth. Hi. Tell us about all these businesses you're doing. <laughs> I'm seeing Pound 3, Develo Naturals, you're manufacturing, you're consulting. I mean, really. So, what do you do, ma'am? Um, exactly. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Ruth. Um, like uh, Bissola said, I'm the founder and lead formulator of Develo Naturals, which is a natural hair consultancy and manufacturer of hair products. I'm not just a hair person. I'm also a person who ensures that people are proud of the hair that they carry mm. and also understand that what it is that comes out of your scalp is beautiful. That's basically the summary. So what do you mean is beautiful? Are you saying some of us think what comes out of our scalp is ugly? To be very honest, yes, some people actually do. Why? Because it's so curly? Because they do not know how to handle it. So from the age of... No, but to be honest, African hair needs TLC. TLC Me, does example. not mean... So the past two years, I've ignored my hair. I've had to chop it twice. Exactly. Why? So TLC does not necessarily mean that, oh, you have to spend the whole day... See, okay, let me give you an example. There's a difference between a needy human being mm -hmm. and a human being who is confident in themselves. Okay. A needy person is draining. A confident person, you give them what it is that they need, they know that this is exactly how it is that it goes. And, and they, they replicate move on from it and they multiply. And move from there. Mm -hmm. Now, needy hair is hair that has not even been looked after at all. Mm. So you just basically say, okay, I'm going to the salon, uh, please put X, Y, and Z on my hair. And then you go home and then up until your next salon visit. No. My job is to be able to tell you that, first things first, your hair is important. You don't need, if you want to relax your hair, it's also important. How it is that you carry your hair is important to you. Now, caring for that that hair that is important to you is then another ball Story. game. So my job is to help educate you on how to carry healthy hair mm -hmm. and know that whatever it is that comes out of your, of your scalp, natural, relax, you wear a wig, you don't. In between. In it's between. All good. It's all Because, you know, I've also found that, you know, when I talk to people about, oh, my they say their hair is breaking and I'm like, ah. Have you done a protein treatment? They're like, sorry, what's that? People just know about this mayonnaise they keep putting on their hair in the salon, but they don't know what. You know about the balance of protein versus moisture. I mean, it's Greek to a lot of people. School or school? No? Okay, so I have um, quite a number of people who come to me and they're like, "Oh, my hair is breaking. My hair is dry. When I comb it, or when I put my hand through my hair, it falls out." And so. The very first thing that anybody should actually ever do is to ask questions. When you ask questions and you don't just step in like you know something, that way you can help everybody. Because everybody's problem is unique, even though it seems general. Hmm. So then you then now come, okay, your hair is dry. Okay, so what's your typical wash day? What do you put in your hair? 
How do you maintain your hair during the week? How do you maintain your hair daily? What kind of pillowcase do you use on your pillow? Wait, what, you what does my pillowcase it? have to do with this matter? I'm sleeping now. <laughs> your pillowcase has everything to do with it. Uh, which pillowcase should I be using? Your cotton pillowcase actually absorbs all the oils, all the so moisture. You're telling me that I can follow like a process now and be like, okay, I moisturize my hair. I'll now go to bed. You'll now go cotton, to bed and, and you now, pillowcase. You now your pillowcase gone. just absorbs all, all the that. love that you have given to your hair. Oh, so, so, so but is that equivalent to also like using a scarf? That's equivalent to using a scarf. Okay. That's also equivalent to you not even spending money and just using an old lingerie, silk or satin lingerie that you have lying about in the house that you, either doesn't size you anymore or... So you is know, it silk or satin so that it doesn't soak up the moisture? Is that why? Silk or okay. satin or... Okay. Satin is actually just a cheaper version of silk. Oh, I see. As long as whatever it is that you're using does not absorb all the oils and moisture that you've put in your hair, it's acceptable to use. Oh, wow. So... If I now, okay, so now I'm listening to this hair now and I'm thinking, okay, how do I get my hair back in balance? Or let's figure out what's going on with my hair. What's my next step? How do I move this Okay, forward? for somebody like you, it's like you have relaxed hair. Mm-hmm. Um, for somebody like you, moisture is key. So yeah. you personally have high porosity hair. High porosity hair Just because it's relaxed. It's just, highly porous. No, not even just because it's relaxed, actually. Um, you could be natural and you have high porosity hair oh, really? because you've colored your hair uh-huh. and you've damaged it either through heat or color. So any kind of damage. damage to and, hair. and we are calling damage hair relaxing. Damage or hair. It's okay, ladies. Mm-hmm. I have relaxed hair. Okay. <laughs> so has relaxed hair. <laughs> hair is high porosity. <laughs> but also women who color their hair also have high porosity hair. Women who um, heat fry their hair have high porosity hair. Now, heat frying is totally different from using heat to do your hair. Heat frying is that you have no sort of protection. You've not put anything in your hair. You just come out and the next thing you just put heat directly on your hair. You fried it. Oh, so that's not safe. There is this, there are steps. So where can we find these steps? You're just telling us all these mystical things and we don't know what to do next. Okay, let me give you, let me give you an example. Okay. Like somebody like you who has relaxed hair. The very first thing that you're going to do is when you go to the salon, they're going to wash your hair. After washing your hair, you're going to condition it. You're going to deep condition your hair afterwards, a.k.a. steaming, like we call it here. Okay. Now, in the steaming stage is where people then now get confused. Moisture versus protein. Mm -hmm. Protein treatment... Ideally, it should be done every four to six weeks, depending on the texture of your hair. Correct. Moisture every week. Really? Every week. Ah, wow. So, like, you mean that I should always basically be steaming my hair every week? Every week. Ideally, it wow. should be every week. Wow. Okay. But in this Lagos of today, no. No, so let me tell you a shock experience I had. I went to a salon and I said, I want to get a protein treatment. They looked at me like, what? I also had that experience. I said, sorry, please. No, I don't understand what's inside. I need protein to strengthen the hair. And the girl was confused. So I literally had to go buy the product so that the next week they could now give me protein. That's why I say I run a consultancy because I not only deal with individual clients, I also deal with salon owners as well. Wherein a lot of the, a lot of times a lot of people now go natural because it's a fad. Yeah. Oh my friend next door is going natural. My sister next door is going natural. Okay, then it might actually be cheaper for us to go natural. No, natural hair is not cheaper than relaxed hair. It's actually a bit more expensive but then you have to know what to use and so how to use it. Hair takes work. If you want to know how to use the products and what products to use, can you can you teach us that? Can we follow you yes, on Instagram? Yes, you can and follow me on Instagram. You can follow What's me on handle? Facebook. It's what? Davela Naturals at Dav- D-A-V-E-L-L-A Naturals. Alright, at Davela Naturals. So everyone, follow Ruth. Let's figure out how this hair situation. Let's stop chopping our hair up and down. <laughs> and yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Girl, this was welcome. amazing and so educational. And this is it for the Mom Spring Show today. Thanks for joining us.